No, you can't hear me. My third Freunde. This is another hide and reveal blowout with a fly in my studio. At least now and not when I'm painting. <laughs> so today I'll be working on a 20 by 20 gallery wrapped canvas. It's a deep edge one. And I will basically use the same colors that I used in an earlier piece. This is one of my first tries with the blowout high and reveal technique. And I um, get a better hang of it slowly. Right now I have it in my brain already. I know what to do. All I need to do now is make my hand do what my brain knows. So this is my Schmincke Prussian Blue and it's a one and I use those spreaders to lay out my paint to have a better coverage. I just used less paint than with a steel stick. My Prussian Blue is followed by this little piggy. Mermaid. And after that, I use another piggy. This is abalone. I can kind of tell on the can how it's gonna shift. Beautiful on black. After the abalone, I added Cobalt Teal by Matisse. And then I add small amounts of the other colors on top of that before I cover everything up with my black. My black is mixed the same way as my other colors. The only difference is that I add, in the very end, a healthy splash of a fluid acrylic. This one is Tri-Art. You can use any of those. The only reason is to make my paint not thicken while I try to get all the pigments in there that I can. And I just make sure that I have enough of the black on the outside of my puddle so I can blow that out too. I want my whole canvas covered with the black but have the colors below revealed with the blow dryer. And since that abalone is such a great shift and looks great on black, I will put it on top of it. Just a small puddle. And then my cell activator, this is Amsterdam Titanium White and Australian Floatrol. And I have it to a relatively, for me, thin consistency. Okay, what I learned and what I actually knew before but kind of forgot by not doing this anymore, um, is to follow your paint with the hair dryer. I give it away. I will put another puddle on top of this one. So this is a fail. And the reason is I 
dig in too deep. Um, that happens when you don't move the hairdryer, basically, or actually go too deep. But if you stay in one spot too long, you will reveal the pillow paint, and that I do not want. And see here, I go over it like the se at least second time, maybe even third time. And it's very white, it's very light, and I'm not gonna be able to fix that. I, It will not fit into what I had in mind. Even though I know that I keep blowing a little bit just because it's so much fun. And the more I do it, the more practice I get. And why waste more paint? I can just play with what I have there. And there's the fourth time I go over that spot and it's even more white shows up. And you see the middle has a lot of cell activators still. I was not able to spread that out, but I kind of have to, otherwise my middle part will not look um, that great. Going over that spot a second time. I like the wispies on the outside though. But I do have to concentrate more on the middle part. Here I tried to fix my white by blowing the black back, but I realized that's not that's not really what I want. Yeah, I give up at that point and will scrape everything back to the middle so that I have a substance underneath my new puddle. And I don't want to waste any paint. So I just push it back in the middle and I can start over again. I basically will do the same thing. Um, yeah. Let's listen to some music and I'll be back.
Okay, so I did some fun things here, some different things. I was not able, wait, no. I didn't want to blow my cell activator more. In parts I should have, but there was one part where you probably realized I did not um, blow more of the cell activator out. I did that this time on purpose and I realized that there was too much cell activator left, so I took a pipette and kind of sucked the excess paint off my canvas. Um, the reason why I didn't blow again was a composition reason. I blew out already a lot. I wanted to keep negative space and if I blew again then you would reveal more of the colors and more of the white and then, you know, no negative space. That's why I went that route. Altogether, it dried wonderful. Okay, this is the spot I was talking about. This was my very first blow. And this was the spot that I didn't blow out completely. And then I sucked up my cell activator right there. Let me go on this side. Not much I can tell you guys from this um, other than still hooked, uh, still playing with the hair dryer, even though some of you missed the swipes. I will get back. I mean, it's obviously I will. This is a fun challenge for myself and I really need to pull through. This is what I do, at least when it comes to my art. <laughs> Let me hang that back. And show it to you up close. Thanks for being here. I love you guys. Bye-bye. I might have to go somewhere else to really show you all of this. This is the middle. This is where I sucked up the cell activator. So it did this kind of sucked in motion. <laughs> I don't know how to call that. So it dried very cool. Like this spot a lot. Oh, the peacocky cells right there. I love how it, how the, I hope I can catch that. Um, how the abalone on top of the black comes out. And then I wanted to show you one thing, which is this. See how I got all these crazing right there? And that happens when you mix up your pillow paint with your other layers. So if, it, if you reveal the pillow paint and blow it over your other colors, the pillow paint will dry in a different way. and sometimes crack. Um, I do not mind it at all in this piece. Big fan. <laughs> um, thank you guys for watching. Bye-bye.